Good afternoon. I'm going to be talking today about numerical modelling of SAV in the northern Gulf of Mexico. The heaps of seagrass on the slide here are for JJ. I'm going to be talking about three projects. The first one is an approach for marsh creation, which is formation of marsh terraces. You can see a photograph in the winter on the top photograph and in the bottom with abundant floating and aquatic SAV in the bottom photograph. We collected field data from a number of different sites to set up these models. On the right hand photograph here, you can see a marsh terrace field. Each of those blue uh, bars there is around about 100 metres. Marsh terraces are primarily built to limit shoreline erosion, but they also have a host of ecosystem benefits for juvenile fish, um, supporting SAV and also aquatic birds. This was a small scale model. It was about one kilometre across by 1.8 kilometres wide, and you can see here the detail uh, in B and C of the marsh terrace field itself. Uh, within the marsh terrace field, the grid cells were around about five metres by five metres. There's two different approaches for dredging these, and hence some of them were deeper in the middle between the, the terraces, and some of them were shallower, and you'll see those in the following results. So this is the seagrass output. So green is potential SAV habitat, red is no SAV due to uh, the shear stress being too high at the sediment and removing the seagrass, and white is no seagrass due to depth. So A and B were where there was no emergent vegetation on top of the terraces uh, and mud sediment, and then on the bottom it's sand sediment, and then they were vegetated uh, with emergent grass uh, above the waterline. So you can see uh, here is the, the in H, so the shallow uh, with the sand with a vegetated terrace creates the maximum amount of potential seagrass habitat. Okay, so the next project I'm gonna talk about is at a much larger spatial scale. This is at the hundreds of kilometers and this image here is from the Louisiana Coastal Master Plan, an integrated plan for large scale restoration. It's updated every five to six years in Louisiana. This data, this uh, effort used um, data that came out of a large Delft 3D model. Um, this Allen in 2013, based on historical data, came up with an equation to calculate uh, percent cover of SAV across the basin. However, it's been known since then that it's uh, it, it doesn't do a great job. It doesn't do a good job of reflecting um, observed seagrass habitat. So more recently, Demarco et al. did an uh, extensive field survey. Um, and they came up with two uh, critical metrics to use. And one was that uh, a two meter maximum depth limit. So that's what we applied here to the original output. And then the other one was fetch. So here you can see the approach we took to calculate fetch. So there's a uniform 250 meter grid overlay, calculating the distance in four cardinal directions of uh, wind fetch, where the critical fetch distance is two kilometers. And so that was then uh, applied to clip the data once again. And then that data was reformatted into broad categories, which was used within the environmental impact uh, process. Okay, and finally, the last example I'd like to present is the Chandlers, which is so now we're moving to a barrier island. The two photographs uh, before at the top and then after Katrina below. So clearly storms are uh, very important in the structuring of these islands and of the seagrass habitats. You can see here an image of the extent of seagrass in 2010. And uh, they're, they're diverse. In fact, the only Thalassia meadows along about a thousand kilometers of uh, the, the northern section of the Gulf of Mexico. So this graph here shows the island area over time. So it reduced slowly from 1850 to 1996. And then there was a, a period of extreme storms with rapid reduction in island area, as well as in seagrass extent. So this numerical model looks at the sand movement again during storms. Um, and then that was filtered again by a depth range that has observed SAV in the field, uh, as well as an, uh, an exposure based on the height of island in front. In this case, there really wasn't much difference between the different restoration scenarios. And what we realized was that there's some additional modeling needed to look at uh, the long-term reworking of those sediments. But we feel that these approaches uh, of numerical modelling can be very effective at uh, estimating potential seagrass habitat 
and informing large-scale habitat restoration. Thank you.